Hello, it's Thursday morning and I'm here with Lieutenant uh, Matt Nazaro from the Police Department and Lieutenant uh, Matt Lubin from uh, Cranford Fire Department and our uh, Office of Emergency Management. We're at the Community Center, which has been set up as a shelter and you'll hear a little bit more about that. But um, as you well know, we have are just a few hours past a rather extraordinary um, storm that's affected a lot of people here in Cranford. Um, we're asking you to please be safe. These gentlemen are going to give you some very, very important information, and I am urging you to please follow their advice for your own safety and for the safety of our first responders. Uh, during the night, we had a, uh, our first responders, police, fire, first aid, our public works crews. Uh, we have support from the county, Office of Emergency Management. So Cranford has been well served, will continue to be well served in the coming hours and days uh, and weeks ahead. So, uh, Lieutenant Nazaro? Sure, Nazaro. well, I'll, I'll kick it off okay. there. Uh, I'll give a brief update on uh, uh, where we're at uh, through the night. Uh, so we estimate, based on uh, National Weather Service radar, that we received anywhere from uh, eight to 10 or even locally higher amounts of rain. So the Union County area and the Somerset County area uh, seem to have received the, the highest totals of the entire state. Uh, and this rain fell over a, a six hour, give or take, stretch of time. So this, this is very unprecedented. This caused the Weather Service to issue uh, what's called a flash flood emergency, uh, which they have never done in the history for the New York metropolitan area. Uh, so, and this was a result of the unprecedented flash flooding that we saw. Uh, I'd estimate 90% of our roadways were impassable during the height of it. Uh, the rain ended uh, shortly after midnight uh, and the river continued to rise as we expected uh, through the night uh, and it, it seems to have crested uh, within about the, uh, an hour or so, you know, about 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, our projection is that this will slowly recede throughout the day. Uh, I want to remind everyone that the flood zone uh, off of Riverside Drive and, and at Springfield Avenue is still largely inaccessible to vehicles and foot traffic at this time. Uh, we're recording this about 9 o'clock in the morning. Please do not attempt to, to, to go into that area. It's very dangerous. Flood waters are, are very dangerous. They, you should treat them uh, that there's contaminants in them. Uh, there could be wires down. Uh, there could be missing manhole covers. So it's very important that if you are, you have to evacuate. If you're if you're walking through them, that you walk along the sidewalk. Do not walk in the street, uh, and, and you know shuffle your feet and try to get out of there safely. It's a, it's a very dangerous situation. Uh, that being said, we do expect the waters to recede uh, throughout the course of the morning into the early afternoon. Um, it's difficult to benchmark this to previous storms like Floyd or Irene because this rain fell in such a short period of time. So the river may not behave as it did. Uh, in other storms. So uh, it, it, it's, these are our, our best projections, but, but our ask is that you use extreme caution. We also have abandoned vehicles throughout the township, uh, so some roadways are impossible. So if you can stay home, uh, that's what we're asking you to do. Uh, we have a, uh, today is going to be full of, of we're still in the response phase of this and, and we'll be approaching the recovery phase of this. And uh, our public information officer, Lieutenant Nazaro, is going to uh, give you an overview of what our priorities are for, for the next operational period. Thank you, Lieutenant, and thank you, Mayor. Um, uh, to all of you, uh, I hope that everyone is doing as well as you can. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say this directly, the worst is behind us. And now it's about recovering and coming up next steps onto how do we deal with the aftermath of this storm. Uh, many of you in the flood zone may have been displaced. You may have decided to either stay in your home or go to family, or maybe you've taken uh, advantage of the shelter that was set up by the Township of Cranford. Uh, and many have asked, when can I get back to my house? As Lieutenant Lubin had said earlier, the roads are impassable. Um, we will let you know, I, I, we're gonna continue to be as uh, transparent as possible, uh, pushing information out to you to let you know when you can safely get to your homes. As of the time of us going to record this message, we had an individual who drove through uh, and unfortunately not only disabled their vehicle, but had to be rescued by our water rescue unit, uh, the, them and their, their animal. Um, please don't, as the lieutenant said earlier, please don't walk around and, and try to survey the damage. Uh, you may happen upon a hazard that's not yet been identified, and you may be the one identifying it unknowingly. So be very cautious about walking around the town 
and uh, especially the areas that have been affected by it. The path forward, a lot of roadways are impassable. Um, many folks have reached out to our police desk inquiring, can I get a barricade on my roadway to shut it down? We're going to get to that point. Right now we're still responding to life and safety emergencies, that's number one. Uh, the second part of that is then recovering uh, from that and, and, and seeing that the roadways that are impassable, if it's from water, we're gonna have to wait until that water recedes. If it's from vehicles, we are actively working. We have officers that are detailed to work with the tow company that we contract with the township to move vehicles out of the middle of the roadway to the side of the roadway. You may see some disabled vehicles on the side of the roadway uh, until they are uh, uh, recovered because many vehicles have become disabled by trying to drive through uh, and, and take the storm into their own hands, uh, um, unfortunately, unsuccessfully. Um, again, we've received a lot of calls uh, for service overnight. It slowed down as the storm and the flash flooding seemed to uh, sub subside. Uh, fortunately, I, we are in the recovery section of our response, but it's, uh, the worst is over, which is, which is very positive for us, and, and certainly we're, we're looking forward to getting people back to normal at the right pace. So please don't think you have to rush back into your home. The community center is open. The County of Union is going to be supplying supplies necessary to run a shelter, need be if you are displaced, if you just need a change of scenery from your home. Uh, certainly there are downtown businesses that are open, but there is flooding downtown Cranford. We're not saying leave your home. We're not saying get out and about. So please be cautious. As always, 911 for emergencies. If you have a non-emergency question, we ask for your patience. If you call us at 908-272-2222. We actually had some people reach out on Nixle, uh, complaints about individuals driving too fast through the roadways. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't agree more. Some people think that in order to go through a roadway that is flooded, the, the best option is to drive as fast as possible. It is the worst option. It's the best option if you want to disable your vehicle, and certainly if you want to create a wake that's going to affect people's foundations and homes and properties. So uh, for many reasons, please don't drive. If you see water in the roadway, assume your vehicle is going to be overtaken by it. So just be very cautious. Um, and take care of each other too. If you have a neighbor that maybe you haven't heard from, uh, maybe they've lost power, we don't know. I believe power outages are relatively small and, and, and uh, specific to the area of town that's been affected. Um, what's up, big guy? We have a visitor here at the uh, community center coming up and saying hello to us. Um, but uh, that being said, all the utility agencies, utility companies have been advised of those things uh, and are going to put it on their response uh, triage. Matt? Yes, thank you. Uh, the, the utility outages at this time are, uh, as Lieutenant Desire said, are largely localized uh, to the Riverside Drive, Normandy Place, Claremont Place area. Um, today we're really going to be out doing our preliminary damage assessments and trying to capture what, what the overall impact of the storm was. So we had a very uh, tough time last night. We had hundreds of emergency calls, uh, but we had a significant flash flood impact, then it's sort of a, a a quiet period and then now a significant river flooding impact so we're trying to capture what the overall impact is so we can document this uh, for, for both emergency management reasons and for for future mitigation uh, reasons so we will be actively out doing that today uh, and we'll have resources you know in, in our most affected areas so Thank I think you. I think the other thing too um, the, the unmanned uh, aerial systems are going to be yeah. deployed to do that surveying so we're not again putting people in harm's way it's really important and worth noting the municipal building is closed Thank you. there is water damage that uh, ha has affected the first floor uh, very fortunately uh, it's not as significant uh, because of the floodgating system that was installed post Hurricane Irene. So we uh, have not seen the widespread damage that we did in the past, and we're, we're very grateful for that. But do not assume that municipal offices are open. They are indeed closed today, uh, both physically and uh, virtually. Uh, so please don't assume that any business that you may need to tend in town hall is going to be able to be done. Mayor? Thank you. And let me just once again urge everyone to please heed the advice and the words uh, that you heard here from uh, Lieutenant Lubin and Lieutenant Nazaro. Um, we will continue to update the public uh, using social media. The police department has a Facebook page. The Township of Cranford has a Facebook page. And as I said, we will update you throughout the day and the coming days as necessary uh, on uh, where we stand. But again, please take their advice. Keep yourself safe. You will keep your, your neighbors safe. You will help keep our first responders safe so they can do their jobs. Thank you. Thank you.